So let's talk a little bit about, before we get to you know the new Olaprib data, um, just the interest in the, the controversy, the struggle we all have in the day-to-day um, -day practice about, you know, you, you know you've got a germline BRCA patient, but she's in the curative setting. And let's just make her in the um, preoperative setting. Um, and she could either, of course, be triple negative or she could be ER positive. Do you treat her any differently today based on what we know today um, with regard to how you'd give her preoperative uh, therapy? How, how about you, Tiffany? What are you doing in your practice? Well, I would say this is a perfect opportunity in, on the heels of Olympia to pursue accrual to Olympia, which is an adjuvant study for Olaparib in patients with germline BRCA mutations um, to see if there is potential benefit to the addition of Olaparib following standard of care adjuvant therapy. Big time. Um, yeah. I think that the neoadjuvant approach is a really compelling one because we can enrich for um, response to therapy and know who may potentially need additional treatment after surgery. Um, we know that we can downstage the axilla, so with pre-op therapy, we're allowing our patients to have less morbidity from their surgery choice. So I think that the neoadjuvant setting is really a rich one. I don't know that it necessarily changes the backbone regimen of chemotherapy that I'm offering, though. Do you use much in the way of platinum sort of upfront, or do you wait to see what the path, you know, uh, re the pathologic response is before considering um, an adjuvant platinum in the BRCAs, you know, in particular? In the germline. So, yeah, the germline. I, I mean, as yeah. you've heard, mm -hmm. it, it, in the germline setting, it's unclear if platinum has really added anything. So these are also women that often are having risk-reducing mastectomy at the time of surgery. So it's not clear I'm allowing them to have breast conservation as a result of adding in the platinum. Um, I would certainly consider it for the opportunity to downstage the axilla, but it's really a multidisciplinary discussion about whether the platinum is necessary mm -hmm. or not. And how, how much you really have to get inside a reduction Correct. of that before their surgery and such. Correct. How about you, Nadine? What are, what are you doing now nowadays with the BRCA1 and 2 germline BRCA patients, you know, early, early stage disease? Well, I would say that really the same thing. I'm not really changing the chemotherapy I give. It's nice to know that platinum's an active agent. And again, most of our data is in the triple negative and in the BRCA1. Um, so certainly, if I'm concerned about anthracycline or somebody has a contraindication, I'm very comfortable using a platinum-based regimen, and that's nice to know. And I think otherwise, as I would probably, uh, despite what I just said for Gepar 6 if I'm starting with my AC in a triple negative and I'm not getting the response I want or there's still significant disease, I'm probably going to add the carbo the way I do it weekly with the taxane and, and think about that. But, um, you know, I, you often get very, very good responses with standard therapy. Mm -hmm. So you'll flex it. You'll, you'll flex it, kind of, you know, guided by the response to AC. And if they just have a clinical CR real fast, you won't necessarily because Gepard 6 do is quite an interesting. Hopefully the um, CLGB 40601 trial that also looked at the plus minus platinum will be able to look at a BRCA cohort and hopefully we'll tell the same story. So we'll have some clear guidance there. I do the same, I do the same thing. I, um, somebody comes in with just a huge amount of disease, you know, big, you know, nose, very going to be difficult operation. I will kind of tend to, um, add it, you know, to, I'll start with AC, then go on to paclitaxel, carbo, or if they don't, if they do real well with standard therapy and they aren't a path CR and they have a germline BRAC, I will give the capecitabine, you know, per the CreateX afterwards, but I have found good safety adding four cycles of carboplatin, just AUC of, you know, five or six every three weeks with the carbo, no problems at all, and then finishing up the, the, um, the six months of the, of the uh, Cape Cytobine. So I, I kind of flex it too. So I'm still sort of adding it on in the highest risk population just because we don't know yet, you know, when we have the NSABP um, randomized trial going on in the, uh, but that's not germline BRCA patients, but at least we're gonna find out what platinum really does overall, but we just really don't have super great data yet in the um, disease-free survival, particularly in the um, in the BRCA population. Mm -hmm. You know, and I would say you you said about CALGB. We're waiting for that. The four hundred six zero three, right? Three, four hundred six zero three. Um, right. You know, the I spy the brightness study, which was just published, was sort of similar. They used the taxane versus AC weekly taxol, and they added 
either carbo or carbovaliparib, which we'll talk about the PARP inhibitors later. But if you look at that paper, I would say, again, I think they had 93 BRCA carriers. It's sort of a similar story. The benefit didn't look quite as large with the addition of the carbo, sort of none with the valiparib, um, as it did in the non-BRCA carriers. Again, these were triple negative breast cancer. So I think there's a few lines of evidence that perhaps they're so chemosensitive that the standard therapy is good. Yeah, interesting. So there's a couple. There are a couple, yeah, a couple that, of them. Yeah, that's interesting. It, it kind of not what we expected. Yes. Not, not right, what we thought right, the platinum was right, going to hit it out of the right, park, right. you know, for the uh, BRCAs, you know, but they right. do so well in general with chemotherapy that what's the additional, maybe platinum's just not that non cross resistant right. to, to an AC type regimen. Now, again, a different argument might be if it's better when a direct comparison mm -hmm. or less toxic or whatever. I think there's a different argument to be made for substituting, but, but yes. we don't have that data yet.